Praise God from whom all blessings flow. They said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord, our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Please remain standing as we sing our hymn of praise, hymn number 62. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour your power. Crown your ancient church's story, bring its bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour, for the facing of this hour. Lo, the hosts of evil round us scorn thy Christ, assail his ways. Fears and doubts too long have bound us, free our hearts to work and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days, for the living of these days. Without further lining, let us sing our hymn of praise.
let us pray. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Father God, we thank you for your son Jesus. We thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We thank you, O oh Father, from last week up until this present time. You watched over us. You blessed us to wake up this morning in our right minds and gave us a, a desire to come out to your house of worship. Amen. Father God, we ask that thou will bless each and every one. You know what we stand in need of. You've been a good God to us. And we just want to gather together to give you the praise. Remember the sick among us. Remember those who have lost loved ones. Father, we thank you and we give you the praise for all you have done for us. We just ask, oh God, that thou will walk before us, touch our hearts. All, forgive us of our sins. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise. For without you, we're nothing. But with you, with you, oh God, all things are possible. We thank you. We magnify your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Our scripture today will come from John, beginning with the 15th verse, and it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That is, that it may bear more fruit. You are always clean because of the words which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them in the fire. And they are burned. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire, and it shall be done for you. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Church, say amen. amen. We greet you this morning in the joy of Jesus. And uh, I just want you to know that we may not have a whole lot of folk in here, but we still came to praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Those of us who are here, we didn't come just because we were worried about the rain. We were worried about how good God has been to us. So we thank you for your presence and your prayers and your participation as we come for this morning's worship experience. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done and he continues to do in our lives. Be reminded that the Florence Dillon District Conference Part 1 will be here at Mount Zion beginning on Saturday, this coming Saturday uh, at 9 in the morning. Registration begins. Uh, we're asking our greeters and ushers to please be present by 8.30 as we prepare to receive the Florence Dillon District and host part one of the district conference. Part two of the district conference will be on next Sunday afternoon at St. Matthew AME Church in Hama uh, at 2 p.m. where Bishop Green will be the keynote speaker. Uh, we want to inform you that the funeral service for Sister Bobby Kelly will be on Tuesday at 12 noon Family will receive visitation here in the sanctuary beginning at 11, and at noon we will go into the homegoing celebration for the life of Sister Bobby Keller. We are asking our ushers to please hear, be here by 11. We're asking those of you who will to please participate in our combined choir as we see uh, our sister in her final homegoing celebration. The advisors of the puppet ministry are asking all persons interested in being a part of the puppet ministry to meet with them immediately following the morning's worship service down in the front of our sanctuary. I might need to make that announcement again, but the puppets and actions will meet immediately following 
this morning's worship service. On Wednesday, this Wednesday, January 25th, uh, our bishop and the AME's bishop will be leading the devotion at the opening of the General Assembly uh, in Columbia. Uh, he is inviting all AMEs to be present at 9 o'clock uh, at the Palmetto Club in Columbia for breakfast. Following the breakfast, there will be advocacy training where we will meet with the Black Caucus at 10 o'clock. At noon, we will have a lunch meeting uh, still at the Palmetto Club. And at 1.30, we will move over to the State House, to the State House Chamber, where Bishop Green leads the legislators in prayer. At 2.15, the AMEs will be doing a photo op on the grounds, on the steps of the State House. And at 2.30, we will be holding an AME press conference. It's going to be the AME Day of Action. We're encouraging all members who will to attend. Uh, we're going to be dealing with issues such as the hate crime bill. Uh, you know, the hate crime bill, they still refuse to pass in spite of what happened with the Emanuel 9. They're going to be talking about the voucher program where the legislature is now uh, contemplating taking our public dollars to get people to go to private schools. So the AME Church is doing a day of action on Wednesday at the State House in Columbia. We're encouraging and inviting all of you to attend. If you plan to attend and that you know you're going to attend, please give me your name before you leave today so that we can prepare to have enough breakfast and lunch for you during the rally. Amen? We ask that you keep uh, in your prayers Sister Martha Miller, who is in uh, McLeod Hospital. And let me just say this. Uh, class leaders, when you do your work, people notice. Uh, I spoke with, uh, and I've been speaking with Martha's family regularly, her, 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 uh, her first cousin, who is really uh, does a lot to take care of her, Reverend Randolph Miller. He said, Rev, your class leader for Martha. They got up he and his wife at 3 o'clock in the morning and went down to the hospital to check on her. Brother Willie Coleman is that class leader. Y'all, that's what church is all about. And so I want to publicly commend Brother Coleman and Sister Liz Coleman uh, on what they've done. And that's, that's just what we do. That's, that when, we, when we join the church, it says membership has its peculiar privileges. That's what we're talking about. It ain't just about paying money and having your name on the road. It's about looking out for one another. Amen? Above and beyond the call of duty. Give Brother and Sister Coleman a hand, if you will. I just wanted to, to mention that. We're happy to have all of you with us this morning, but I see one of our stalwart family, the family of Sister Rosalie Riley. Y'all just wave your hand. Her daughters are in the house this morning. Amen? So thank you so much for your presence and your participation. The Lord's name be praised. Those of you who are standing, y'all come on down and get a seat. Come on down and get a seat. Come on in the house. Amen? As we prepare for our altar call. As the musicians give us some appropriate music. Nobody knows like you know what the Lord has done for you. We woke up this morning and the rain was falling. Some of us use it as an excuse to stay home. But at the same time, the prognosticators, the, the forecasters are telling us we're in the middle of a drought and God sent the rain. So I don't know about you all, but I'm not complaining about the rain. I'm glad that the Lord has sent the rain. But more than that, I'm glad that he woke me up and allowed me to be able to witness his rain. God has been good to us. Had he not been, you wouldn't be here this morning. So let's take this opportunity not to worry about what's wrong, but to thank God for what's right. Watched over us all night. 
woken us up this morning, protected us when things all around us were going on. But God, his amazing grace and his tender mercy made it possible for us to be in this place one more time. So join me, if you will, in prayer and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Father and our God, again a few of your humble and faithful servants have gathered in this place we call our sanctuary to call on your precious and holy name. We come first, Lord, just to tell you thank you for grace, for mercy, for watching over us for blessing us even in spite of ourselves. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for the opportunity to be in this place one more time. While we're here, Lord, send down your Holy Ghost power. Fill us up. Make us whole again. Where, where our cup has run empty, fill us up again, O oh Lord. Where our spirits and our hearts have been wounded, build us up. Strengthen us where we're weak. Give us strength for tasks that we can run on and see what the end is going to be. Transform us. Make us holy thine. Use us to the honor and glory of your name, O oh God. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us for each and every one of our sins and our transgressions. Bless those who are less fortunate than we are, those who are sick, those who are bereaved, those who are shut in. Touch them and let them know that Jesus still reigns supreme. Bless Mount Zion Church and churches everywhere, Lord. Those who wanted to be here and couldn't, those who could have been here and wouldn't, bless them and keep them covered under the blood of the Lamb. Then, Lord, when we shall have left this place this day, don't leave us out there by ourselves. Walk with us, stand by us, pick us up and carry us when we can't run on for ourselves. But more than anything, while we're here, give us something that when we run into folks after we leave this place, they will know because of the glow on our face and the love in our heart, we've been in the presence of God Almighty. We love you, we worship you, we praise you. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.
And then Jesus says to them, that's how folk will know whether or not you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So then as we sit here this morning in this church, the question becomes, are we disciples or are we really just members of the church? If you're going to be a disciple, you got to love other folk like Jesus loved us. For some of us, that includes loving the pastor that you may not care for. For some of us, that includes loving that brother or sister who went out and talked about you behind your back while pretending to be your friend. That includes loving that supervisor on your job who always gets on your case and disrespects you in front of other folk. That includes that person that you trusted with your heart and your emotions and they betrayed your love and your trust. That includes loving Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. You see, this new commandment that Jesus gave doesn't apply just to the folks that we consider to be our neighbors and our friends, but it also includes those that we consider to be our adversaries and our enemies that ye love one another as I have loved you. And let's keep it real, y'all. It takes a special kind of love for some of us. I know that many of us have grown in Christ. I know that some of us are, are new creatures in Christ, and some of us don't go to places we used to go and do the things we used to do. But even with our spiritual growth and all of the improvements we've made in our lives, we still not all of that. Some of us are difficult to love because of the way we carry ourselves. Yet, and y'all, this needs to be a self-check moment. We still need to remember that Jesus still loved us when we were smack in the middle of our mess. We want to talk about other folk mess. But Jesus loved us when we were smack in the middle of our mess because had he not, we'd still be in our mess. And so instead of complaining and talking about how difficult it is to love other folk like Jesus love us, don't ever get so high and mighty that we think that everybody finds us easy to love. Yeah. We too have issues that other folk don't want to deal with. But Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you love one another. And when you're looking at this context, Loving one another means everybody, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then Jesus said, by this, by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And y'all, this is the part that some of us really need to understand because some of us get confused about what makes us a disciple. Discipleship is about more than attending Mount Zion Church. Discipleship is about more than coming to church every Sunday. It's not determined by the fact that you sing on two or three choirs. You're not automatically a disciple because you are a steward or a trustee. Not determined by how much you put in the tithing box. Not determined by the fact that you've been a member of the church for 20 or 30 years. The Bible says by this will all know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. I was listening at a young lady. She's not young. She's old enough to be my mom. But at any rate, preachers pay attention to I was listening. She was talking to somebody else, but I was in the vicinity. And you know what she said? The world needs more love. You know, we, we, I'm talking about genuine love. It's easy to love at Christmas time. We just came out of the Advent season. It's easy to show love at Christmas. Most of us do a pretty good job of, of love, showing love on Communion Sunday. But is the kind of love we, is that the kind of love that Jesus has for us? <laughs> is that the same kind of love that we're showing? Now let me tell you something. It's easy to put on the show. You can tell anybody you love them. But how far are you willing to go? Do you love if it hurts you to love? It hurt Jesus. Do you love if it costs you to love? Jesus paid the ultimate cost. 
My prayer for us and my hope is that we can get away. And really, the thing that keep us from loving each other is foolishness. It's petty stuff. My hope and prayer is that we all can get away from all of the pettiness that keeps us from loving like Jesus commanded us to love. Petty jealousy. Petty bickering. Petty disagreements, fussing and fighting over things that have nothing to do with our soul's salvation. Let me just keep it real. Is it really what you fussing about? Is it really worth going to hell for? That's the bottom line. Let's just keep it real. Are we disciples or just members of the church? Our challenge is to get past the small stuff and learn to love folk in spite of rather than because of. Because of. Yeah, I love you because you can do something for me. But what about the folk that can't do anything for you? What, what, about, what about the homeless folk that don't even look good to look at? Can you love them? Not because of, but in spite of. And I'm fully aware that folk make it hard to love. Some folk make it hard to love them. But I refuse to let the devil and someone else flow over into me and make me miss my blessing. You know, I, I, I don't know, but maybe I'm crazy, but I just prefer to love the devil out of them. I can love them when they're nasty, and I can love them when they're nice. I can love them when they're true and open, and I can love them when they think they playing tricks. I thank God Almighty for giving me the strength to love folk even when I know they don't mean me or heal a bean were for good. And just because I don't act as ugly and treat you like you treat me don't mean I don't know where you're coming from. It simply means I ain't letting you take me to hell with you. My brothers and sisters, I want, I want you all to understand. And I, want you to, and I want you to feel like I feel. I've made up in my mind, I'm not going to let anyone jeopardize my salvation. I'm going to love you like Jesus told us to do, and I'm going to let God worry about you. There's some things that we can't fix. I can't fix how you feel about me, but I can control how I feel about you. I can't control how you treat me, but Lord knows I can control how I treat you. I just came by to tell you that if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, and if you have your heart in the right place, that same Jesus that told us to love one another as he loved us will give you an ample supply of Holy Ghost power to see you through. <laughs> power to love your enemies like you love your friends. Power to look beyond people's faults and help them with their needs. Power to love folk in spite of what they say about you, in spite of what they do to you. Power to not let anyone steal your joy, and that's important to me. Now, all of us in here got sense enough to know that we have haters. If you don't, you need to wake up and smell the coffee. And here's the thing, you don't have haters because necessarily of anything that you've ever done. You don't have it. But why give haters that much power over you where you allow them to steal your joy? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And I'm not going to let the world take it away. You can hate me all you want to. I've got my joy wrapped up, tied up, and bound up in Jesus. And Jesus gives me the power and the strength to love you like he loves me, whether you love me or not. It doesn't have to be reciprocated. A new commandment I give you 
that you love one another as I have loved you by this. Not because you drive a nice car and wear a good suit. By this. All will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The kind of love that we celebrate on Communion Sunday. The kind of love that kept Jesus on that old rugged cross. Now, don't get it twisted. It wasn't those nails or those spikes that kept him on the cross. That was Jesus' love for us. Don't, 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 the, 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 the kind of love that rolled away that stone, that's the kind of love he's talking about. The kind of love that got Jesus up from the grave with all power in his hand. The kind of love that watched over us all night long. The kind of love that woke us up this morning and started us on our way. The kind of love Brings us to Mount Zion every Sunday morning with a smile on our face. Listen, I, 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 I can't say everybody, but I believe that there are some true disciples in the house. But that's a, you know, that's a question that you got to answer for yourself. Yeah, your name is on the roll. You got a class leader, but does that mean you're a disciple? No, that just means you're a member. The discipleship piece is determined by the love that's in your heart. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. It, it crosses color lines. It crosses all kind of preferences. It, you may not like what I do, but you still ought to be able to love me. We got so much prejudice and, and all kind of isms in this world. I don't have to agree with what you're doing to love you. But Jesus said, I got to love you. And not, not just any old kind of convenient love. But I have to love you the way he loves me. And if everybody would just take a look at themselves and think about all that you've been into, all that you've done, look back over your life. And if Jesus can love you. Now, some of you may be perfect, but, but I, I'm not in that category. But those of us who understand that we are sinners saved by the grace of God, and Jesus can love you. What is it so bad that somebody has done to you that you can't love them? A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. As I have loved you, love one another. And that's the, that's the, that's the determining factor. By this, by, 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 by the kind of love that you have for one another, all people will know and, then, and, then, and if you look at the text, it didn't just say, know that you are a disciple. It says, know that you are my disciple. You are a disciple of Jesus. By this, all will know that you are my disciple. If you have love for one another. As we leave... Figure out where you want to be. You want to be a church member? Or you want to be a disciple? You know, I've told folk all the time, I don't care. You know, it's, it's good to have members, but it's better to have disciples. And our job is to make disciples, and, and we make disciples by preaching the unadulterated word of God. 
there's nothing that I can say that can convict you more than the words in the Bible. I can try to break it down for you. I can try to make it real. But the work has already been done. Are you a disciple or a member? A hymn of invitation, 246, come to Jesus. If you're not a disciple, this is your opportunity. If you don't think you've got the strength to, to love like Jesus taught us to love, offer yourself to him. Open up your heart to him. Open up your mind to him. Ask him to transform me from the inside out. The doors of the church are open. makes disciples. The doors are open. He will save you. to be in place for our service for Sister Kelly and our stewards and trustees as we are honorary uh, pallbearers and flower and casket bearers so please uh, be in place at noon on a Tuesday Sister Kelly was a very faithful and active member and loved this church and it's only proper that we be in place to support her family but more than anything to honor her memory amen Praise God from whom all blessings flow. keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance and grant you his peace now, henceforth, and forevermore. Thank you. 